On today's episode of The Unwritten Rule, got some stuff to dive into on the football front. Little just just quick hit news to kind of get into some off-season stuff. Uh, big recruiting news also with Matt Solers, the quarterback. We're going to have an update on him. He's got his commitment date set and it's coming up. Uh, and Missouri's, Missouri's in the mix for the 2025 quarterbacks. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, and then, yeah, just some other quick hitting football stuff. We'll do actual quick hits. Uh, we got Ken Sports Short, Sturdy Bird of the Weekend, Fraud Rankings, uh, and then the Joke of the Week. So good show to get into. Um, we've got, you know, just a quick show for you guys to, uh, to start your week off. I know everyone's watching March Madness, and uh, but March Madness has been awesome. We're going to do our March Madness picks presented by Bet Online. Uh, you can get those lines. The tournament is here, and Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for the season with the best bracket content contest out there, uh, and uh, as well as odds, lines, and info on every game and every round, right up until the national championship. You can bet. Uh, you can access the most up to minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or mobile devices, and even track your bracket in real time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today to get in on all the action. Remember to use our promo code Believe for your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. We've got March Madness lines, Kenny and Peyton. The, the tournament's been awesome. Kentucky uh, losing. We got NC State on a Sweet 16 run. I, I've I've loved every second of the tournament. It's been so much fun. Uh, and 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 I'm sticking with it. My uh my line. I'm gonna go to the Sweet 16 matchup. Got set last night. I'm gonna do Creighton Tennessee. A little early line here for you guys. Uh, that game's on Thursday. I think either one of these teams can make it to the final four. And uh, I'm going to go a little different. I'm going to bet on the over on this game. It's 144. Seems a little high for uh, for an NCAA tournament game. But I think both these teams are really good. Uh, you know, Dalton Connect, Baylor Shireman, Ryan Kalkbrenner, those guys can all put it in the hoop. I think we're going to get an instant March classic in this game. Maybe a typical Rick Barnes choke job uh, like, he, like he loves to do. But I got the over in the Tennessee Creighton Sweet 16 game. I have both the I both, a lot of these both these teams going really far in some of my brackets. So uh yeah, this is a big this is a big game for my a banner game for my bracket. Give me give me the over in this one. Yeah, Creighton, I know you have a plan for me, man. Let's let's get it done. Please do not let Tennessee go any further than this. But um Rick Barnes. I, I'm sticking I'm sticking to March Madness uh as well, Knowlton. But I'm gonna go to the other game that's uh set for sure. Um, Illinois, Iowa State, the Cyclones against the fight in the lion. I, Illinois had a bit of a Mickey path to get here, um, but whatever. Um, I, I think Iowa State's really good. I think they're going to be able to slow Illinois down. I am taking the Cyclones minus two. Not even looking like at Torvik. That's just how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> you you guys are in the wrong tournament. Uh, I think that's where we need to start there. Yeah, we'll the that, right. You already see my bet on there. This is a game on Monday, and it's the best tournament around. And it's Indiana, Purdue, Fort Wayne versus Tarleton State. And Tarleton State is on a roll right now. Uh, let's look at these last couple games against ACU, 59 to 86. Texas Damn. Southern, 82 to 71. This team knows how to win. And you know what they're going to keep doing? They're going to keep winning. Tarleton State minus five and a half in the best tournament in basketball. It's, screw the NIT. Screw the CBI. NCAA tournament. The CBI is where it's at. The, the Tarleton the State. CBI. Tarleton State is a feeder school for Texas A&M. Texas a and going to lose. Who do you want to root for? Tarleton State. Tarleton State minus five and a half on Monday against Indiana, Purdue, Fort Wayne. What round of the CBI is this? That's a good question. It's a very hard <laughs> tournament. Like, uh, graphic to find. Like even when I was looking this up, I didn't know what tournament it was until like last night when I picked my bet. Because um, no one is, no one's mentioning it's a CBI. I, I'm looking at headlines and I read the articles. There's no mention of it in some of these like little news stations that are around the area. Um, I'm looking up the the format right now to see where we're at. I believe this is second round at at, at most. Uh, yeah, Evansville plays. Uh, Quinnipiac, Little Rock plays Fairfield, and we got Presbyterian against Montana while we're recording here on Sunday. <laughs> Still a lot of basketball left. Big games. Big games. This line think... is electric, Kenny. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Good. I, good when I first saw it, I was like, did they just like schedule like a, a fun little game at the end of the season? <laughs> <laughs> and I realized there's still another tournament going on. A friendly. Exactly. Um... Tarleton State, I believe, is the luckiest team in the country, according to Ken Palm. So you have that I going think for was, you. Oh, wait. No, that's true, I think. Because I, I think South was, Carolina was the luckiest tournament team. Let me see. I'm, I'm on Ken Palm. They're luck rating. Oh, no. Tarleton State, no. I'm way off. They are fourth. Fourth in luck rating. So 
makes sense. You have that going for you, Kenny. They'll get Can the later. luck keep going or will the luck run out in the On CBI, the for Kenny? For Tarleton. No, what's their mascot? Oh, they're the um, Texans, I believe. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. It's a tongue twister, Tarleton Texans. Yeah, Tarleton beat Radford um, in the first round. The Highlanders. There we go, Rat. There we go, Tarleton. Good bet. Kenny's just, Kenny's just trying to decipher what the CBI format is. It's the Discount Tire CBI tournament. Oh, love the sponsor. It's a good sponsor. What is with um, tires in these tournaments? Yeah, what was the... What do we have the other one? The Hercules Tire Horizon Hercules. League tournament. Or no, that was the yep. Barbasol. 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 There was like the, the Hercules Horizon. Tire Big South or something like that. Yeah. There's one thing to know about this podcast. We love our mid-major basketball. So good for Kenny on keeping that, that going with the CBI. Hopefully his... All right, this is the uh, graphic it? from 2023. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can this like, turn have something this from this year? No, I'm not going to watch this game. <laughs> it's the R. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure it's the R-O-C-B-I. It is. Yeah. Okay. This is, Let's move well, on. I mean, Forget it. Who cares? <laughs> Enough All to right, say uh, what CBI is. Wait, oh, he found it. He found it. I think. Yeah, this is the first round. Cleveland State plays Northern Colorado. They were playing. Might have been yesterday. No, that was today. today. I think it's over. Screw this. We got it's somewhere in the CBI, apparently. So this is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, could be the we'll CIT. Show. Maybe, maybe it is the CIT. Them. It's the CIT. It's not even the CBI. <laughs> Jeez. This has gone off the rails. All right. Um, okay, it's a CI. It's the CIT. Forget the. Who cares? Let's just move on and and, right. and segue it. We're Semifinal number two. two. That's what it is. The CIT semifinals. Number two. Number two. All right. Drink it in, folks. Yeah, everyone go watch that game. All right, we're going to start the show. Uh, you know, hope everyone goes and watches the Tarleton game. But uh, yeah, put in your bets for all the tournament games and bet online. Thank you, them for uh, sponsoring the show uh, for us. With that, we'll get started. The 100 rules start anyway, sure. right now. I just... I... Marcel, where are you going with that disc? <laughs> you are not putting that on again. Marcel, okay, if you press that button, you are in very, very big trouble. Attention. Everybody stop what you're doing. It's time for The Unwritten Rule, a Mizzou sports podcast brought to you by the Believe Network, alongside Peyton Haverman and Kenny Van Doren. Here is your host, Jack Knowlton. Welcome back to the Unwritten Rule. Today is Monday, March 25th, and Mizzou football got a new member of its staff. That's what we're uh, that's what we're going to lead things off with. We're going to uh, get to Matt Zoller's in a second with uh, with where we stand. That's probably the biggest news here of the week for football. But we got a couple of quick hitting things, uh, starting with, like I said, Mizzou hiring a new offensive analyst, Sean Gleason. He's coming in uh, in that role. He was at Northwestern as an offensive analyst, and he was the OC at Rutgers. Uh, I believe Oklahoma State and Princeton, he was there as well. Uh, so Sean Gleason coming in as an offensive analyst. I don't know too much about him, but it uh, seems like he spent some time on the sidelines as an OC and, you know, has has some experience. Seems like a good little hire for Mizzou to kind of bolster its uh, its offensive staff here, Kenny and Peyton, uh, as the we, we continue in the spring. And then, uh, of course, I'm sure he'll be he'll be helpful in the fall as well. Um, not exactly an inspiring, uh, resume as OC at Rutgers, not going to lie there, but I mean, he's an analyst. It really doesn't matter that much. Uh, Mizzou's got like a fair number of offensive analysts. I believe Scott Linehan, the old Cowboys OC is still an analyst for Mizzou. Um, so drink likes to just surround himself, uh, with a lot of voices in that room, just a lot of input. Ultimately it's still Kirby Moore's offense. Uh, I don't think that's going to change. So just, a Another maybe Kirby Moore was like, hey, I kind of want to get this guy or something. We don't really know. Uh, I doubt it'll ever be something that important, but. Just experience on staff. Um, guy who's been around um, some pretty well-respected head coaches and Mike Gundy and Greg Schiano and 
yeah, I, I do kind of like it. You know, I was trying to find the connection to maybe someone else on the staff if he overlapped, and I, I didn't find one. But um, he does have that kind of pull to the to the northeast, and we're going to get to Matt Zollers here in a second. I doubt that he'll be heavily involved in recruitment, but he could probably help you with a couple tips on what some of these guys in the northeast and, and other east coast uh, recruits are, are kind of looking for at that quarterback position wherever they land. Yeah, you, I feel like you do always see these names in recruiting, especially like these guys will help out on that front. Um, you know, when when recruits are saying like, you know, they're not talking with the the off the OC or the DC all the time necessarily. There's other people in the mix, kind of keep keeping in touch with them because obviously the OCs and DCs and coaches get pretty busy. So, yeah, he might help there, but seems like he's got a a fair bit of experience. So a name, uh, you know, kind of in the woodwork now of Mizzou football, Sean Gleason. Again, I uh, had some stints. I think he was just at Northwestern. And it was a senior offensive analyst was his most recent role. Uh, so, yeah, nice nice experience to add there. Um, other thing, I'm glad we're talking about this because this I just thought this was kind of sick. Um, tweet from Power Mizzou. It was at uh, Mizzou's, one of Mizzou's practices. Um, Mizzou head coach Eli Drinkwitz. He talked with Terrell Owens and then Jacob Peeler, the receivers coach, talking with DK Metcalf. DK and Terrell Owens at Mizzou's uh, football practice is just sick. You got the star power rolling out. Um, I, I don't know if you if you guys have any thoughts on on DK or To, well, but I, I think it's just cool that Mizzou's getting the. Uh, you know, this is the pro the day. Out. This was this the pro, pro day. day. Oh yeah, yeah, the pro day. Sorry, um, not practice. So I mean, To was there because um, he has a son who is on Missouri uh, Missouri State's football team, uh, and Missouri does like the whole regional thing. So like players from like Semo. Most state, they all come up there. Um, yeah, there he is. Kenny hasn't pulled up Terry Terrico Tariq Owens. I'm pretty sure is how that's pronounced. Um, that is yeah, Tariq. <laughs> oh, that, that's no, that's helpful. Thank you, most. No, state. I thought, I thought he was going to click the little speaker and it was going to oh, say no, it. No. But you can hear it. <laughs> I think you can hear it. <laughs> I heard Play it. It was pretty loud. Oh, did it? Oh, <laughs> I didn't hear it. I yeah, I didn't hear it. But um, either we've just been... blasted everyone's eardrums, or no one heard that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, DK is there. I mean, he was a former. Uh, he was Jacob Peeler was his position coach at Ole Miss. Again, I have no idea why Jacob Peeler does not get more love, considering some of the pros he's turned out um, and some of the guys he's developed at Mizzou. I mean, it's probably, if not the uh, deepest uh, receiver group in the nation, it's really high up there. So um, that's why To and DK were there. Um, just in terms of what happened at the pro day, I mean, I know D Rob really boosted his reps. I remember he like on the bench press, I remember he was not happy with the conditions of the bench press at the combine. So Goody kind of, uh, held up his end of the bargain. He kind of walked the walk. Um, he did do plenty more reps this time around. So good for him. Uh, all the 40 times I've seen were unofficial. So I don't know if any of them were like really verified, but um, that's all wrapped up now. Uh, we'll see. I'm sure we'll see more of where scouts have Mizzou guys at, uh, in the weeks coming. All 32 teams, uh, showed up to the pro day as well. It's, it's a hard thing to cover. I think for media, I think this is probably the biggest headline is seeing Terrell Owens and, uh, DK Metcalf there because you'll try to, you try to get measurements and they're never correct. It's, you know, you'll, you'll find out all that stuff down the road. The one thing that really stood out to me um, was seeing Ben Stratman's name on the graphic. And he was the guy who came from Missouri S and T last year. And they kind of compared him to Cody Schrader's rise. And that's the first time I've seen his name mentioned since he transferred to Mizzou as a walk on. So, you know, I, I, this is probably like a dream for him to come, you know, to do this kind of stuff. But uh, at the same time, it's like, wow, like I, you know, this guy was kind of talked about heavy, uh, when he when he showed up and then you just didn't hear him for the whole season. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of nice that they, they get guess get their chance to have some exposure to pro day. Like you said, it's a, a dream come true kind of situation. Um, I saw a thing, too. I, I totally feel bad because I don't know uh, the host or the analyst who was talking about this by by name. It doesn't say. But uh, there was a guy on a, from CBS Sports who was talking about NS Rakestraw, called him his, uh, his favorite player in the NFL draft a tone setter on defense was like kind of the thing he was talking about. So, you know, a lot of Mizzou players stock kind of rising, um, you know, here as we build toward the draft, we picked the wrong draft to go to boys. We went to the, we went to the NFL draft last year. Me and me and Peyton were just talking about this. We missed the, we missed the Mizzou heavy one, but um, yeah, plenty of, 
plenty of names to uh to look at and and good for D Rob for what yeah what did he say it was like the carpet moved when I tried to lift the the bench up yeah it was that yeah. like some something was wrong with the hooks where you said it um, they were uneven yeah they said. were uneven that's, that's what great. it was and he just was not. Like I think he did 21, which for someone with the arm length that he has isn't that bad. But I mean, he, re- I think he did 28 or 29. I saw at the pro day, so it was a lot better showing for him. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of D Rob, this is a good, good segue. I didn't mean to do this on purpose, but uh, uh, he got put on a finalist list uh, for the Arthur Ashe Sports Scholars Male Athlete of the Year. Um, pretty cool recognition. Uh, it recognizes outstanding young minority men and women who have distinguished themselves in their academic and athletic pursuits. Um, I, I pulled that from the website, but yeah, I mean, cool for, cool for D Rob. We've, this has been pretty known for a while, how he kind of excels both in the classroom and like kind of in the community and, you know, definitely a good thing for NFL teams to know. I'm sure they, they pick up on that interviewing him uh, and stuff like that. He, he, uh, you know, he's, he's a, he, he has great character in addition to obviously being a great player. Um, but good for him to get to get recognized on a, on a thing like this. Yeah, no, I don't think there's going to be any character concerns for D-Rob uh, in the NFL. Everybody speaks like everyone just seems to think the world of D-Rob. Uh, I mean, we've seen it before. I mean, he does a lot of stuff like the backpacks, giving those to kids. Uh, just an all around good guy. It seems like helps that he was really good on the field, too. But um, yeah, just all around. I. I would really be shocked if D-Rob is not very successful in the NFL. Yeah, true team player. Uh, we'll probably never forget that he changed his name plate to Mizzou for his final home game <laughs> at Perot Field. And I bet that's, you know, that's a thing they'll maybe talk about, too. You know, just caring more about his team than, than the name on his back. Yeah, he's 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 a good guy. He will be missed greatly. The Mizzou thing was so sick. Darius Mizzou putting the put in the name plate but yeah good for uh good for darius robinson hopefully he wins that i think the other finalists were like a soccer player and a lacrosse player i couldn't remember I, it wasn't just football so i i didn't i didn't write down those names but and he put it um, up on the screen oh yeah you can, you can visual viewers YouTube. will know yeah everyone on the youtube go subscribe um the headline news here kenny and peyton from kind of the last week or a few days uh, with Mizzou football is out in the recruiting world. Uh, Matt Zollers, the quarterback commit in the class of, or the quarterback recruit rather in the class of 2025, he's got his commitment date set uh, for April 4th. He's um, pretty well regarded uh, pro style quarterback. He's from Pennsylvania, four-star recruit. Like I said, rivals has him as the number nine player in Pennsylvania and the number 24 overall pro style QB. So this would be a good get. I mean, we've had, you know, a lot of talk about Mizzou's QB room heading into next season uh, with, of course, the Sam Horn injury. And now they have Drew Pine. So uh, you can't stress enough how good quarterback, how big quarterback depth is. I was going to read what uh, what he said about Missouri because he visited on March 20th. But uh, I know, Peyton, you're a fan of of analyzing, psychoanalyzing the uh, each school and the little blurb they give. So I'll let I'll let you do that. But this would be an exciting pickup if uh, if he does choose the Tigers on April 4th. Yeah, de- um, I normally like to just analyze how long the quote is, and that's <laughs> not a good sign if if uh, that's what it is for Zollers, because Missouri has, I believe, the shortest one here. But um, he said of his visit to Missouri, the stability is strong at Missouri. They just extended coach Eli Drinkwitz's contract, so he will be there for a while. I like how the coaches and the staff all work well together there, too. They have a plan, and they know what they are doing. Um, we've said this a million times on this show. QB is uh, a cycle is a must for Drinkwitz. It's almost like something he puts the full court blitz on and it's smart. Um, and it'll always be something that he should do. Um, to me, him committing two days after his last visit, he visited Mizzou again on the 20th, like Knowlton said. So that's already done. Um, it kind of makes me feel like he already knows what his decision is. And he's just making one last check um, of all the places. I don't read anything into the time these visits happen uh, because quite frankly, in this day and age, it really doesn't seem to matter anymore. Um, We'll see what happens. It seems like all four of these schools really want him. uh, So I will see. Uh, I I have no idea how this one is going to shake out, but. We've seen it a lot of times though, that you, you have this list and maybe it happens more in the transfer portal. But you'll visit, say, Pittsburgh on March 28th, and then you, you call it you call it quits there. You're not going to Penn State. You're not going to Georgia because Pittsburgh left such a, you know, promising 
you know, visit to you. They, they, I mean, they, they swayed you so much. They made you believe that that was home and it, I mean, it could have been home for you as well. But uh, sometimes you see that and it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case for Matt Sollers. Looks like he's going to finish out these visits with Pittsburgh, Penn State and Georgia coming up next. And sometimes it, it is good for the, to the last team to have the, you know, the last, um, the last visit, say. just that opportunity and just give you the last say about why you should come to the school. And Georgia has that two days before his uh, scheduled announcement. You know, maybe it, it changes something, maybe it doesn't, but it, if Mizzou left a good impression 14 days or actually 16 days in advance, it's probably probably for the best, and um, we'll see how this one kind of shakes out. You know what the positive spin I'll put on this, and, you know, just, just a thought that just popped into my head is, you know, you look at that Final Four, you look at Pitt and Penn State, which are in his area. He's from Pennsylvania. kind of makes sense. He's considering the area schools. And then he's got two SEC schools there. Georgia, it makes sense. They're going to be in for every high end four or five star. And then his other SEC schools, Missouri. Like, I think it, it goes back to what we've kind of said over the last year that Drinkwitz has really established is that he's getting, you know, on the list and on the finalist list at the very least for these, these high end guys. He's recruiting well. And I think, you know, while it might not end in, in a victory, if he, if he maybe chooses to stay local or especially if he goes to Georgia, that'd be unfortunate uh, for Mizzou. But Again, I think, you know, you're staying in the mix for some of these big out-of-state guys. Drinkwitz has already done a good job establishing in-state, which is, of course, the priority. Um, but I think I think it's just good to be like, okay, if he's only going to have one other SEC team in the mix with Georgia, Missouri being that team, I think is pretty is pretty cool that it's, that it's you know, that instead of an Alabama or an LSU or, a, you know, Texas A&M or Texas or something like that. Um, it's just, it's yeah. interesting because, like, this isn't an area that, anyone on staff to my knowledge has a footprint on like Kirby Moore's a Pacific Northwest guy uh, more than anything else. Drinkwitz is not Northeast. I don't really know if I'd say Drinkwitz. Drinkwitz is kind of just a Renaissance man in recruiting. He kind of recruits everywhere at this point, but I mean, we haven't really seen him dip into the Northeast before. I mean, you remember that quote a few years ago that got kind of blown out of proportion about recruiting in the great state of Massachusetts like he just doesn't recruit up there much so they probably feel pretty strongly about Zollers uh, I'm sure they've made that very clear to him um, so we'll see what happens that's why the UMass game is staying on the schedule and that Boston <laughs> College game Zollers is probably watching and he's like I could I could change them he saw it I could change those Tigers yeah uh, jokes aside uh, I mean it's very very cool to see you know your team, you know, be in the conversation with that, but there's no award for being finishing top four. For sure. And yeah. it's very hard. You know, you can say that with Missouri, there's not much pull. You're losing coordinators within, in this, in the same conference. So that's going to happen. You know, Missouri is not a powerhouse SEC school, but they're trying to, Tigers are trying to stay up there after, after winning a, a new year six bowl. So being in this is good, but you still have to win those recruiting battles, and the recruiting battles don't end. This recruiting battle doesn't end on April 4th. It ends in December, and there can always be yeah. some kind of poll if they bring Zollers back, if he commits elsewhere. Another team can still be in on Zollers if he commits to the Tigers on April 4th, and that, that's just where recruitment is going moving forward. No doubt. You make some very good points. Yeah, there is there is no fourth place medal, and I wasn't trying to give Mizzou one, I guess, in this case, but um you're right they will want to try and secure dollars and yeah it won't it won't none of these matter anymore until december 10th when they sign that paper to say at least they're enrolled um it's that early then, oh one? not to, what did i say december 10th it, it's up yeah. it's up there i don't remember they changed all the cycles we'll have to that's a i'm letting that be a future us problem where we figure reinterpret when all the signing day period is because they moved it before the bowl game i think yeah i don't know it's always changing yeah good thing i don't have to deal with this yeah. anymore <laughs> yeah. Lucky Kenny. Does it does it have the new day? This is last oh, see, year's. I, I think that changed. Like. Yeah. It's not December 20th anymore. They moved it up. I do I remember that. And that's probably it's a like lot before. Smarter. It's, it's like before yeah, the uh recruiters still don't like that stuff. Games. December 20th. Oh, that's last year's. We'll, we'll figure it out eventually. Yeah, yeah I don't I think don't know. anything's set in stone. That's a future us problem, but uh, you know, hopefully Zollers is putting his name on uh the paper for Missouri. Come. Look up early signing day 2025. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny Payton wants to know. National signing day in 2025. That guy's a basketball. Is that for football or basketball? That, that's not early signing. So it is what it is. We'll know. figure it out later. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, either way, hopefully Zollers is putting his name there uh, instead of uh, to oh, another school. Wait, we'll what's see. this AP? Oh, oh. 
week at Wednesday, Wednesday after, after Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's like the first Wednesday in December, which would be okay. uh that would be December fourth, which sounds right. That sounds right. Cool. It's uh yeah, I think it's December fourth. Austin so, McLean's oh, again, hopefully, birthday is right around then. <laughs> hopefully Matt Zollers is is signing his NLI for Mizzou, but we'll see on April 4th where he where he chooses to commit again between Georgia, Missouri, Penn State, and Pitt in this weird Final Four. Very weird Final Four. Uh, but with that, let's segue. We'll finish the show. It's a bit pretty light, you know, Mizzou segment this week. Still waiting on AD stuff. Obviously, Transfer Portal. We talked about Jacob Cruz last show, so go listen to that. Um, Tigers continue to have some names, or linked to, to some names. So, uh, you know, we'll have all that for you guys. But for now, let's segue to Quick Hits. Okay, quick hits time, Kenny. It's uh, this this has been fun with the sporacles. You have another uh, Ken Sports Shorts sporacle quiz for us. What are we What are we might, looking at here for those on the YouTube? Might buy ad blocker. This is ridiculous, dude. I <laughs> God, it's <laughs> like look at look how many so many ads just pop up when I'm just trying to play a game with my friend. <laughs> uh, okay, the sporacle for this week is Mizzou basketball starting lineups uh, in the 2010s. Oh so we're gonna go from 2010 to 2019. It's gonna be kind of tough because we were nine years old. Uh, nine or eight years old in 2010. Uh, can you name the Mizzou basketball starting lineups of the 2010s? Five players with the most starts per season. We have 10 minutes to do so okay. to this whole thing. Okay. Um, and you can see right there, if you're watching, it gives a position as well. If you're watching on the YouTube, it says forward, guard, 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 forward, or center. guard, center, guard, forward, guard. It, it it just gives you it. So we'll we'll go through it. Um, tell me when you guys are ready. Yeah. Full disclosure, y'all, we are not getting all these. Like yeah. people, um, people will be yelling at their screens again. Yeah. Play. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Hit to go. it. Hit it. Okay. Uh, Pressy. Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> Definitely not Michael Porter Jr. Oh, no, he How do you spell it? it? Is it E-Y? E-Y. E-Y. Yeah. Ooh, we got Matt Pressy uh, in there too. Pressy. Jordan Jordan Geist was a starter, wasn't he? Yeah. I think G E I S T. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's one. There was um. Denman Marcus Denman. D E N. Um, M O N. Yeah. Um, would this have been English? This would, would, would this have been after Kim English? Or, yeah, no, he no, he's here. Three yeah. Kim um, Englishes. Uh, from tw- ten to twelve. Did um, Tillman start as a freshman? Take a question. Nope. O N O N O N. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it one L? I think it's one L. There it is. Ah. Twice. And as yeah, he was a okay. huge recruit. Um. The other porter, oh, Jonte. Yeah, Jonte. Wow, really? I guess he tore his ACL too early. Um, oh was, my gosh! Okay, so this is nineteen, so it's not going to be Reed Nico. What about what about Alex Alex Okarai? Did he would he have started? Or see after the UConn transfer. I spell Okarai. Oh, let me look it up. I think it's Jordan like Clarkson. High. While we're waiting for that, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, he was not here too long. Um, God, look at those Kim Anderson years. I mean, this is pathetic. Um jeez. Oh, <laughs> like good. Um oh uh it's a O R I A K H I. Like that? Okay. O R I A K H I. I think you said. I think you had it right. Yeah. No AK. <laughs> no, no. Spell it slowly. O R I A K H I. Okay. There we go. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing if he just wasn't on there. That's one. Um. Car- Carol. Demar Carol. Oh he, no! I then? think that was before. Yeah. Oh my God, goodness. look at those Kim Anderson years. That's so I, I just don't. Yeah, like I don't know. Wow. I like I, I, yet yeah, like the like the the late 2010s or mid 2010s Missouri basketball. I just don't know. Like I don't remember anybody on those teams because um, they were not very I'm good. I'm trying to think of like players that were like around MPJ. God, that was the year before we got there. Um, Was Mitchell Smith there? He might have been. Mark Smith. Oh, Mark Smith was. Okay. There we go. That stinks. We should at least um, get that. <laughs> that stinks. 
I feel like we should get at least that starting lineup. Pinson was gone. Well, that wasn't that wasn't our that wasn't our year. I don't think. No, that I was know, our senior I, year of high school, which is weird. I, I think that you'd consider that 2018. Yeah, no. I would have called that 18, but whatever. It's not no, because it was. Oh yeah, I guess I guess it, that's, it is because it's a 2018 2019 season. Yeah, you're right. That is weird. It ended 2019. when the season. Ended. Evan Yerkes. <laughs> No, <laughs> Sutton, Sutton wasn't a Sutton wasn't a star. Wait, oh, um, per year, Kevin per Kevin year. Per year. How do you spell his last P-U-R-Y, name? P U R Y P U R year. Yeah. Oh, oh there you go. There we go. <clears throat> um. Wow, this is yeah, this is tough. I wonder if we get to half twenty five. Probably it's not looking good right now. Um. <laughs> 2012 like we're missing one starter from that really good team i'm gonna cap it at five minutes yeah, okay that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> because we're probably not gonna get much did park parker brown didn't start right who got who got uh who got dunked on but actually fell by that was prezzy that was prezzy okay and it wasn't fa- like he t- yes. went for the win and got blocked yeah oh and they called no but who foul. got dunked on who's the one that got dunked on oh that was matt prezzy Okay. Um, oh my gosh! We got thirty seconds. This is this is poor. I I, I am not the mid the mid two thousand tens. I I am not familiar. Anymore. Oh uh, the, 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 oh god! He's a he's a profile photo of a dude on Mizzou Twitter. Um uh Cassius, oh oh Cassius Ro- yes Cassius Cassius Robertson Cassius, yeah Cassius Robertson. Because it's literally like his face on a dollar. Like that's that's cool. I won't lie. Isn't um, um someone else has a burner account? That's somebody. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Oh wait, it. wait, wait. Like who was the dude that got kicked off? Yeah. I, oh, they don't show it. That's oh, so. What? Hang on. Oh, you, I'm gonna. I'm gonna to look up answers? the. No, I think this dude made that quiz like that. Why? I don't know. We didn't get one player from 15. That's what I'm looking up. There was a dude it that got... 2014, 2015, Jack. Yeah, I got it. It's a dude uh... that was off the team. And that was like later on. Like I 17. don't recognize any of these names. Okay, I'm going to read you the roster. Um, Deuce Bello, Jonathan Williams, Tremaine Isabel, D'Angelo Allen, Jimmy Barton, Naaman Wright, Mon- Montique Gill Caesar, Keith Schamberger, Wes Clark, Jakeen and Jakeen and Grant, I remember I recognize. Oh, name. go back up, Kenny. Jordan Barnett, that was the guy I was thinking Jordan of. Jordan Barnett, yeah. yeah. This 2014-15. CJ Roberts have... started a bunch of games too, so I bet he was one of the starters. That makes sense. Save your pencil. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, folks. We Yeah. Highly touted recruit. Yeah, where I'm not mid mid like to mid 2010s. I am not Mizzou basketball lore goes out the window for me. Yeah, became but, a super fan afterwards. Yeah, once I went once Cassius I got there for college from Canisius, dog. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Cass, Shout out, Cass, Cassius Canisius. Say that mid major mid major transfers. Major That's a good one, Kenny. I hope one day we get to do one for the 2020s because I think we can yeah. get all those. Oh, that'd yeah, be, that'd be pretty cool. easy. That would yeah. be light work. Uh, nice. All right. Um, next, <laughs> what have we got? Dirty Birds of the weekend, Kenny. What is your dirty bird? This is a good. This is a good one. Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. If you're watching on the YouTube, uh, I guess flopping and falling really hard when you get blocked um, leads to a foul, especially if you're wearing a KU uniform. Oh my gosh, Kansas up 98 or 90 to 89 with 15 seconds left. And with a clean block from behind, uh, a foul is called and pretty ridiculous. I, I forgot who is number 25. What is his name on Kansas? Nick Timberlake. Timberlake. Yes. So, so they posted a photo of him, Kansas did after the game and just like posted him and like put his name in all caps. And the photo was nearly getting ratioed. It's just terrible. I mean, it just, it happens all the time. And, you know, Kansas fans can say like, oh, you know, it, that's just how the game is. You can't blame the refs. It would be four on five down the stretch, and there's an opportunity for um, – I mean, who were they playing here? I forgot. Sanford. Uh, Utah. Sanford. Or Sanford, yeah, for Sanford to, to score, and they just 
It was just no I opportunity. Just, I can't like I really like I've always never ever I hate blaming refs for sporting event losses. I hate it. It's such a loser mentality, like 99% of the time. I really Samford would have won this game if this was called correctly, because like Kenny said, that's a five on four break. Nick Timberlake's weak ass is just laying on the ground instead of getting up and chasing after the play. Uh, Samford was on a roll like they like this Kansas team was dead, like seriously, like and we'll get into it later. Bill Self didn't care if they won this game or not. Um, I had Samford plus six. That was my best beat last week. They should have outright won. Like, this is such, how do you, like, this is, like, considering the moment in the game, too, this is such a miss. Like, I this just shot, hate that. This shot, that shot right there that they just showed is my, like, it, like, the ref is literally staring right at this kid blocking this shot. And he it's just, just he like, just, he doesn't. Nick Timberlake like, hit the ground really hard, and they called a foul. Yeah, Nick Timberlake, and then after the game, Nick Timberlake, look, I wasn't expecting Nick Timberlake to be outright. Yeah, no, I wasn't fouled at all, but we'll take, we'll take the call like Dejuan Harris, his teammate was, but Nick Timberlake saying, no, I was definitely foul. You're dweeb. Like, come on. This is, that was such a bad call. It ruined day one of the tournament for me. Like serious. That sucked. Yeah, it, it, it was, it was a bad call. Samford is, is a really fun team. Uh, Bucky McMillan, their coach, Bucky ball. Um, yeah. Kenny, Kenny's trying to find the one that of him getting almost ratioed. Um, Timberlake. Yeah, Nick Timberlake was all they tweeted. Yeah, yeah bad, bad. Um, just a <laughs> look at Nick that face. Timberlake, who fr- was bird. from Towson. Mizzou reached out to him, uh, but he went to Kansas and was not very good this year. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into what happens into Kansas in the in the next round. Uh, you know, luckily it's, it's a lot more happy. Yeah. Um, Peyton, Ian said game? to us when he was on the show earlier, or a couple of, or I guess last week now, uh, Ian Wheeler, former Howard running back, he's like, you never want to put yourself in a position where the the referees or umpires dictate the game. But at yeah. the same time, it's their job to do the right thing, just like how it's the player's job to do the right, right. thing. And it is pretty ridiculous that that's what it comes down to. I guess yeah, for Stanford's Sam- sake, uh, Kansas lost in the next round. So maybe it, it feels a little yeah. bit better. It just got to suck for these guys. And it just lose. They got demolished, demolished by Gonzaga. We'll talk about it later, though. Yeah. Because um, they're in. Oh, they're not in frauds. Never mind. So, yeah, they got absolutely crushed by uh, by Gonzaga, luckily. Like, what was it? And then the the, margin? Oh, I think they outscored them. It was like 40 to 9 or something crazy. It wasn't Kansas. 9, but it was pretty insane. So Yeah. And then, and then, uh, Bill Self said afterward that he'd been thinking about next season for a month now. So, yep, losers. So. Sam, it should have been Samford. Samford actually had some fight in them. They were down by twenty and came back. But you know what? Classic Allen Fieldhouse refs traveling. It is what it is. Kansas is is dead now. So, yeah. there you go, Peyton. Moving your, on, uh, Dirty Bird. Dirty My bird. Dirty Bird of the week is going to be John L. Davis of the FAU Owls. Um, now no longer without with a coach. Um. This is John L. Davis. Um, Florida Atlantic and Northwestern were in a great battle. I mean, Florida Atlantic was up like 58-56. Northwestern comes back and ties it. Uh, John L. Davis gets the ball with like seven seconds, and he just kind of, once he gets to half court, like this tweet puts it best. I don't know if he was expecting a timeout or what. He just kind of walks up and settles for a like two guys contesting his three-pointer. It gets blocked. Um I made the joke that he was humming the mark, the one shining moment theme to himself as he was taking that shot. It was just really uncomposed from a team that went to the final four last year. Um, really frustrating year for Florida Atlantic. Like they flash, like they beat Arizona in a non-con game. They also had just some inexplicable losses. Ultimately they flamed out in round one instead of, I thought they were capable of making a run uh, if they didn't have to play UConn, but wasn't to be John L. Davis is my dirty bird. Yeah. We, we've had some like weird heads, like kind of head scratching final moments here in March, in March madness with like players are just kind of checking up threes. They're not taking it to the basket. Take it to the basket. Guys. The one commentator said uh, so famously a couple years ago, but yeah, tough for Florida Atlantic. And now uh, their coach Dusty May has gone. He went, uh, 
he went to Mich- he took the Michigan job. Michigan. So. I think some of those players have eligibility too, so it'll be interesting if, uh, yeah. if they maybe follow him over there. But John L. Davis still has eligibility, so there you so go. So say Jesus Carrillo Martin, <laughs> maybe a good bench bench spot. For Big Ten. There you go. Hey, I mean Michigan, they're pretty bad last year. It's kind of his level at this point. Um, my dirty bird of the week. I, I think this might be the second week in a row that I'm I'm giving him this nod. I'm giving it to Joe Lenardi. Um, and my connection to birds for him is uh. It appears one member of his family, Kathy Lenardi, picked the Golden Eagles to win the NCAA tournament, the Eagles bird. Um, anyway, he tweeted a photo of his family's bracket pool uh, of all the Lenardis, uh, and he was in ninth place, and he said, Bare, uh, barely ahead of the family dog. Again, what a country. Um, so I guess, oh, Sam, that makes it, yeah. It's, it's Sam, Sam picked Sam Sam picked Stanford. Um, so Sam Lenardi is apparently the family dog. Joe Lenardi's in ninth, which this is a very, I would say uh, it's a choice to tweet this as a so-called bracketologist uh, for one to be in ninth in your own pool. And you literally pick the bracket. And this is after he messed up a lot of things. He got a lot of things wrong with the actual bracket. The other thing I'm going to point out that was pointed out to me um, on CBS. He he works for C. He's using a CBS bracket. He works for ESPN. It's not even (laughs) it's not even ESPN bracket challenge. And he works for ESPN. Joe Lenardi has had an absolute nightmare of a March Madness. The like three months or two months of the year he's supposed to step up and work. He has just floundered. Uh, this is like, I don't even know. This is like a four losing to a 13. Because I don't think Lenardi's at the at the capability of a one. But man, ninth in somebody, your own pool and using CBS. <laughs> somebody in his family had to have sent him just a link to CBS. And he was like, fine. Like that had to be what happened. That's the only thing I can think. I of. don't think he thought about it. I think he's in that age where it's like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, probably. He's got to be but. going soon. We're gonna we, we've we've already put our foot forward. Peyton should be the one to replace Joe Lenardi uh, as the bracketology expert. And uh, yeah, not not good. <laughs> Is that a bobblehead? What? You can buy a bracketology bobble? Yeah, I'm not That's... buying that, Joe. Sorry. Kind of sick. Unlock your ten percent off. There you go. Put in your phone number. Um. Okay. Nine one one. Hey. All right. Uh. What's the next second? Uh oh. What's he gonna say? He's going crazy. What's he gonna say? What's he gonna do? What's he gonna say? Oh, it's not a clock. Coming in at number five, we have players that are not named Cousinard or Dante on the Oregon Ducks. Why? Because the Ducks had zero points in the second half uh, that didn't come from Dante or Cousinard. They were playing two on five ball, even in overtime. They had one bucket from a guy named Tracy. Cousinard was so out of energy. He was just jacking up threes. Um, Horrible, horrible look for the Ducks. No depth whatsoever. Dante and Cousinard have my respect. The other Ducks are frauds. Yeah, uh, number four on the fraud rankings. Uh, I've been forced into do this. This is against my will. Um, I, I, I did not agree to this. It's the Wisconsin Badgers. They lost to James Madison. Okay, what's number three? Big, big, big weekend for the Dukes. Duke Blue Devils, Duquesne, and the James Madison Dukes all advancing. Number three on the fraud rankings, we have got... Chris Jens is the worst coach in the world. Chris Jens is the worst coach. And the Mississippi State Bulldogs are frauds. Like you were ever going to bet against Izzo in March? Come on, guys. He wasn't playing USC yet. Of course, Michigan State was going to win the battles of MSUs. Uh, Chris Jans plays a boring brand of basketball. Uh, I will pick against him in every single game he's in the tournament. Uh, yes, I'm bitter because Mizzou's head coach. And at number two, I'm like a bird. I want to fly away. Fly away from the, the NCAA tournament. Fly away from the NCAA tournament. That's what South Carolina was seeing as they got stomped by the Ducks. 87-73 to 73 in the first round of the NCAA tournament. See ya, SC. At, at, at number one on the fraud rankings, we head up to Pittsburgh where Jack Golke became Oakland Shepherd to the round of 32 while Mr. Reed looked like he was a little too focused on that NBA draft money. Uh, Oakland, Jack Golke, 
What's a two-pointer? He doesn't know. He only knows good NIL deals and making Oakland fans yell, Oh, baby, a triple! As he buried 10 of them, tying an NCAA record, and put Coach Cal Mahatsi. People were making eight-minute videos on how shitty of a coach Coach Cal is. That buyout's expensive, but I think Big Blue Nation might just pay it. Cal's on the hot seat. The Cats are the number one. There you go. Good timing there. Well done, well done, guys. Timing. Uh, yeah, bad, bad stuff for uh, Kentucky. Community Appreciate note. Community of the week goes to uh, week. talking baseball. Uh, they, they posted the Dodgers hadn't lost a game. Uh, they scored 10 plus runs since 1999. It was via Sportsnet LA. Well, Sportsnet LA said 11 plus runs, and they got community noted. And the community note says the Dodgers lost to the Tampa Bay Rays on May 28th, 2023, by a score of 11 to 10. And then replying to yourself with community notes uh, is community notes is here. It was 11 plus, not 10 plus. Oops. And then posted a video um, from the broadcast. Man, um, nice one, John Boy. You're aggregating. Got you a community note. And congrats to that. <laughs> Sounds like you're a little upset he exposed the cheating Astros. <laughs> the trash Astros. I'm yeah, objective. A... Not fan. <laughs> This one comes from our t- favorite TV series, The Today Show. Um, guys. All right, Jack. It was a good show. Uh, I'm glad, I'm glad hey, you and Peyton no got silence. to see what each kind of other. Bagel, what kind of bagel can travel? Uh, a everything bagel? No. Everywhere bagel? Think the opposite of a everything bagel. Um, a nothing bagel? Close. You're getting closer with that. Kenny, do you want to take a stab? No. Plain bagel. Plain that's bagel. right. A plain, plain bagel. bagel. A plain bagel because planes fly and they're also barren. So there you go. Good joke. Good joke. All right. Well, in the show, thank you to Bet Online for sponsoring the show. Everyone go enjoy the rest of March Madness. You can use Bet Online for those lines uh, and and just have fun. My bracket looks terrible. Oh, look, I have it right here. My bracket's terrible. I still got a lot of Final Four teams in, but we're not we're not looking good um but you know everyone go enjoy the missoula march madness we'll have more news we'll be back for you guys on monday